Horace Mann is quoted as saying, every addition to true knowledge is an addition to human power. Horace Mann, 1796 to 1859. Horace Mann was an American politician and educator. He is best known for promoting, promoting normal schools and is recognized as being the father of the common school. He was born from a poverty-stricken family on May 4, 1796 in Franklin, Massachusetts. His childhood and youth were passed in poverty and his health was much altered due to early manual labor. But despite him being poor, he was a self-taught man that at the age of 20 was admitted to the sophomore class at Brown University. There, he took a keen interest in politics, education, and social reform. By 1819, he graduated with the highest of honors. He then studied law for a short time at Worthingham, Massachusetts. For 14 years, he devoted himself with great success to his profession. By 1837, he worked for the Board of Education, placing him in the foremost rank of American educators. He held his position until 1848, holding teacher conventions, delivering numerous lectures and addresses, introducing numerous reforms, and planning and inaugurating the Massachusetts normal school system. Mann's commitment to the common schools sprang from the belief that political stability and social harmony depended on education, a basic level of literacy, and the inculcation of common public ideals. He declared, without undervaluing any other human agency, it may be safely affirmed that the common school may become the most effective and benignant of all forces of civilization. From 1853 until his death, he served as president to the Antioch College at Yellow Springs, Ohio. This is where he taught political economy, intellectual and moral philosophy, and natural theology. He was well loved by his students and by the beneficial influence he had in education. As stated, Horace Mann was responsible for the creation of the Common School Movement. With the making of the Common School Movement, Horace Mann really did impact the education in society even leading up to today. Making education something all children would be able to attend is definitely a world-changing event. What started in Massachusetts ended up being an all-over-the-nation movement and even till today, parts of the world still takes this movement and uses it as well. Giving the opportunity to children to attend school made so many resources available to those who weren't used to having them. It also gives equal opportunity to these children to attend school because now no one wouldn't have been exposed to the world in a behind the sense of knowledge kind of aspect. Later in a child's life that wasn't able to attend school, like other children, wouldn't give them a fair share at opportunities exposed for them. For example, opportunities in jobs. An employer would definitely choose the applicant that can perform the task being asked of, but if they were educated, that just gives them an even higher chance of being picked. One could say Horace Mann definitely opened up a lot of doors for people. Back in the day, children who did attend school really only studied the Bible, but what the common school movement was opened up the curriculum to new subjects to teach the children that could help them later in life as well. One of these subjects is like history. You need reading to read the history books. Therefore, without reading, one wouldn't be able to read the books. So the foundation of history starts with reading. These subjects are the core subjects of our education. Each of these subjects starts with the basics, starts with the basics of these. Gaining knowledge of these subjects at a young age will only further broaden the mind for new information to come. Horace Mann really did an, an, an astounding thing when he wanted to create something that would have an impact on society and education itself. If the world had never been exposed to his ideas, can you only imagine how education would be? I believe we would have not have gained as much information as we attain today for sure. We can thank Horace Mann for the education we have today. 
Yes, different things and different people have impacted education as we know it today, but it all started with Horace Mann and his ideas. Horace Mann once said, A teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on a cold iron. From what I got from this, it simply means that as a teacher, one needs to gain the knowledge to teach these children with a desired heart to want to help them. At this time, he also developed his hugely influential, although at the time controversial, main principles regarding public education and its troubles. Number one being, citizens cannot maintain both ignorance and freedom. Number two, this education should be paid for, controlled, and maintained by the public. Number three, this education should be provided in schools that embrace children from varying backgrounds. Number four, this education must be non-secretarian. Number five, this education must be taught using tenets of a free society. And one of the most important that Horace Mann strove for was that this education must be provided by well-trained professional teachers. Horace Mann's word angered groups across the social and political spectrum, from clergymen to educators to politicians. But his ideas prevailed and still do today. As a social reformer, he was influential in the promotion of the temperance movement, which was aimed at prohibiting the use of alcoholic beverages. He also worked to help establish a state insane asylum. While the idea of an insane asylum may seem offensive by today's standards, this was a progressive approach to improving mental health in the 19th century. It was the combination of both man's personal and professional experiences that influenced his approach to this area, in which he had the most profound contribution education. Man's dissatisfaction with public education began with his own schooling as a child. By 1837, public education in Massachusetts was still no better than it was during man's childhood. The state decided to act. In 1837, the first ever Massachusetts State Board of Education was formed and man was chosen as secretary. This would be the beginning of a progressive movement in public education, often referred to as a common school movement. The movement began in the 1830s as social reformers pushed for a better, developed, tax-funded, secular public school system. Mann knew that in order to see public education flourish, he would have to improve the training of teachers as well as it provided an avenue for the sharing of information. In 1838, Mann founded a bi-weekly journal entitled Common School Journal. This was a progressive step towards reshaping the way public education was perceived, not only in Massachusetts, but across the country. Mann also spearheaded the development of teacher training institutes across Massachusetts. In 1838, Mann helped establish normal schools in Massachusetts. These schools were aimed at preparing teachers by establishing pedagogical norms and standards. Mann believed better teachers would result in improvements in student learning. In essence, man's contributions were all well aimed at improving the well-being of the citizen, citizenry by providing a tax-funded, high-quality public education. Man was influential in the development of teacher training schools and the earliest attempts to professionalize training. Although he was not the first to propose state-sponsored teacher training in institutions, but in 1838 he was crucial to the actual establishment of the first normal schools in Massachusetts. Man knew that the quality of rural schools had to be raised, and that the teaching was a key to that improvement. These developments were all part of man's driving determination to create a system of effective secular universal education in the United States. He has many places, including schools around the world, that are named after him. Horace Mann's statues stand in front of the Massachusetts State House, along with that of Daniel Webster. At Antioch College, a monument carries his quote, which has been recently adopted as a new college motto. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity.